Hey everyone, my name is Greg Brown, Senior Account Executive here at Blue Margin. And today I'll be walking through some demos of Power BI dashboards that we've developed to oversee sales performance. Now, overall, my focus here today won't necessarily be on all the features and functionality of the dashboards, but instead what these dashboards enabled our client to do with their data and how they helped this client take action to improve results. And that's really because a core tenet of our design philosophy is to make dashboards as actionable as possible. We would argue that there is absolutely zero value that's created by a dashboard if it doesn't guide and propel the user into taking action to improve something, to mitigate a cost or a risk, or to capture additional revenue. It's, of course, these actions that create the real value, but we see it time and time again, great looking dashboards that don't really guide the user into taking action. They could look fantastic, they could be accurate and valid, but if they're not leading users into taking profitable actions and making the best decisions, they're ultimately not creating value. So I'll be the focus here for us today as we take a look at these sales performance dashboards. And we'll look at two pages here in the demo today, starting with the sales overview dashboard here. And of course, these are dashboards that are developed and, and based on real ones that we've delivered for a client, but that are fully anonymized and that use synthetic data. In this case, these dashboards we developed were for one of our manufacturing clients. So let's take a look at the sales overview first. You'll see our general design principles here on the dashboard as we open it up. And these are really awareness, analysis, and action. So at the top, we prominently feature the KPIs that we care about the most and that are the real reason that we're looking at this report. Here we have revenue, quantity sold, total material margin, and then the material margin expressed as a percentage. So we have that awareness and we can see through the conditional formatting that all of our KPIs are green here because we're comparing very favorably to the prior period. Now, as we get down into the page, we start to look at the analysis portion of this. So we can see revenue by market just very quickly at a glance, and also can see that revenue uh, trend on a monthly basis, and also showing how we compare to the prior period here with the dashes that are built into it. Now, as we go below here, we can also start to analyze our top customers and how we're performing in terms of sales there. And then here we also see a good example of the conditional formatting that we utilize on the page that really helps to focus users on where they should and shouldn't spend their time in analyzing the dashboard. So here we see through the conditional formatting that we're doing quite well with a number of customers compared to that prior period. But I do see a couple customers here where we're essentially showing flat revenue and no real sales growth. So maybe that's where I wanna to start to drill in and that's where we'll start to see this bridge to action that we build into our report. So as we open this up and maybe let's take a look at Summit Engineering to start with here. I can then get down into the product or item level here and again can see that on an item by item basis we're doing pretty good in a number of these areas. This one's a little flat. Um, now here I've also detected some areas uh, as a products where we're not comparing very favorably and revenue and sales is down. And so here I've honed in to this dashboard going all the way from the top and, and the awareness of the metrics and how we're performing generally in the big picture down to a customer level and then to an item level to understand where we might have some opportunities to boost our sales and revenue. And then this can turn into the action potentially of a certain sales rep talking to that customer and really trying to analyze with them wh where, where are we not meeting the mark here in terms of this product? Um, is there a, a better new competing product on the market? Is our product really just not meeting the standards of the certain use cases that the customer has? But really try to overcome that objection to look at a way to free up some additional revenue here. And as we zoom out overall and considering the dashboard, it's really giving the team a great way to drill into precisely where they would want to spend their time trying to increase revenue and sales and where they might not want to spend their time because it's really highlighting exactly where we're seeing that shortfall in sales so that reps can have really focused conversations with specific customers and take action to increase sales after reviewing this report and, help, and using this report to help with prioritizing their time. Okay, and then next, let's take a look at the sales detail page. And here you're going to see many of the same design elements that we featured on the first page. So a general awareness through the main KPIs that we have here of how we're performing in terms of our total revenue dollars and then the total gallons sold of all of our products. So we can see that at the top. We can see, of course, that we're not comparing very favor favorably to the prior period, 
So in this case, our KPIs are conditionally formatted in red to show that we are off track here. Now from here, we go into the analysis section of it to really look on a rep by rep basis, how our reps are performing against the prior period, and then also the budget that they have for the year. And if I look at prior period, I can see that we're down generally. When I'm looking at the budget variance, I can see that some of our reps are tracking pretty well to plan and other reps are a little bit off. And so if I wanted to drill into a rep to understand where we might have the opportunities to increase performance, I can open that up and then I see all of the customers that are assigned to this rep. And as I'm drilling down, I can then understand for certain customers, we're looking better than others. Here we see an increase over the prior period. Here we see pretty marked decrease. And then from this level, I can then drill in from that customer to then look at these specific items or products that we're selling to understand what might be making up this overall drop in revenue. Here I can see in the first two products, we're essentially flat, not a major concern there. Would like to see some growth, but it look like we're tracking to the prior period. And then other areas were really far behind. Um, we noticed you know, 326K here in revenue and prior period for this product but nothing that we're recognizing right now. And so just like the first example, this gives us a great way to drill into from total sales performance down to a rep by rep basis, and then, to, then down to a customer and item level basis to really understand where we should be spending our time trying to talk to customers and overcome roadblocks that could be preventing us from realizing as much revenue and sales as possible. So these are just two dashboards in this overall demo. There's others that we include here. And if you're interested in giving this uh, dashboard set a test drive, please reach out. We're glad to share the link with you and to discuss any specific questions you might have either around the functionality or as I've discussed today, how we can design dashboards that can be actionable, valuable tools in helping teams to improve outcomes. Thanks for joining us.